Hi there, uh, we're going to speak about personas and campaigns today. So to start off with, first of all, who am I? My name is Darren, I'm the co-founder of Mpool. Um, if you have any questions or just want to follow me, um, you can use my Twitter handle, at Darren Smith. Alright, so what are personas? Personas are essentially a fictitious character that represents the different decision makers and influencers within your target market. And what's nice is if you put yourselves in the, in the kind of shoes of the persona, it gives you an interpretation of how these people are seeing your various marketing activities. When do you need to create personas? So it's the absolute first thing you need to do if you're doing any marketing, in particular digital marketing. Um, it is not a one-off thing that you do though, it is a living document that you'll complete, uh, continually update and, and change. A good example of that is uh, if you created an IT persona, um, IT manager Ian as an example, a couple of years back, you may have said one of his interests is in cloud computing. Um, that would definitely not be the case now because cloud co computing is something that is just a standard, a normal thing. Um, so you would need to be updating the personas on a regular, on a regular basis. So what happens once you have a set of personas? Um, the, it gives you the ability to come up with campaigns um, that allow you to attract people. Um, it, it, uh, it gives you ideas to come up with campaigns to convert people and also ob obviously to delight people. Um, as well as the kind of different buying stages, campaigns of different buying stages, so from awareness, engagement, consideration, purchase, um, and then fulfillment and retention. And he has just kind of um, a, a, an image um, showing different campaigns in different stages uh, that two personas would go through. Um, uh, so not only in terms of campaigns, but as um, you see here is, is um, how that person or how that persona would engage with your website and your other digital properties. Of course, the other thing with personas is it gives you an indication of how to speak to a particular person, what tone to use, what style to use, what type of messages you need to give to that persona. So a persona is made up of three sections. First of all, the personality of the persona, then their product and service needs, and then how they make buying decisions. So we're going to go into each of those three elements in detail. So first of all, personality information. So when you build this, remember that somebody may read your persona document and um, it's easiest if you write this persona document in first person. So pretend that you are the actual persona and you're writing about yourself. Secondly is make the document as visual as possible so it can really um, kind of come to life and it's really easy to digestible. And then when building out these personas, think of the persona in their personal capacity as well as in their work or business capacity, especially if you're doing a B2B persona. So um, first of all, you need to kind of develop uh, kind of a day in the life of this persona, so what would they do from when they wake up in the morning until they go to bed? Um, then what are their ambitions in life? Who they engage with or work with? And then what are they, what are they working towards? Now, in a work environment, this may be called their goals or objectives, um, and they might be measuring themselves against KPIs or KPAs. Um, in a personal environment, it may just be something that they're working towards. Um, and then what do they worry about? If, if, if they wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning, what is it that's keeping them up. Now, when it comes to writing about content that worries somebody, or not necessarily writing content, just creating campaigns um, that's uh, kind of about what worries somebody or what their ambition is or, or what they're working towards, um, it's, it's highly effective stuff because if you, if you think of the example of when you're looking to buy a particular new car, when you select that car that you want to buy, suddenly you start seeing that car everywhere. It's something that's called selective cognition. Um, and so when somebody is worrying about something or they're working towards a particular goal, um, any, any piece of content or any campaign that they see relating to that is going to stand out for them. Um, so it's a very powerful source of, of campaign ideas. The next area is around their products or services needs. So create a list on exactly how this particular persona would describe their requirements. Um, so the examples that I've got here is 
a persona called Builder Barry may call what they want a masonry bit. But a persona called DIY Dave that does not know those technical terms of what your product or service is called may call it a drill for brick walls. Now, identifying what people are calling your, your product and service um, or, or the solution your product and service offers is really important in terms of keyword research for the product pages that you create on your website for search engine optimization as well as for Google AdWords campaigns. The other area that you need to, that you need to build out in your persona is frustrations that this persona has with your industry or competitors. That's going to help you identify messaging that you're going to create for this persona. The next section really really important is how they buy. So um, this in this case, you're going to answer the question in first person, but you're going to supply an answer of what type of campaign that can be developed to uh, solve that, that person's uh, kind of answer to the question in third person. Um, so where do they get their information? Who influences their decisions? How do they identify they have a challenge? So for example, they may kind of something may break and they identify they have a challenge or maybe their wife says they need to do something and it's a challenge or maybe it's a work requirement. Um, how do they find solutions to their challenge? Um, do they look online? Do they go to um, friends and family? Do they attend expos? Do they um, read a book? Um, so there's different ways to find solutions to the challenge. If they do phone you though and speak to a salesperson or come into your store, what are the questions they ask the salespeople? Then how do they shortlist solutions? Um, how do they evaluate vendors that they've shortlisted? And then once selected, how do they buy? Is it a case of simply just handing over the credit card or is there approval process? Do they need to go and ask uh, a family member's permission or do they need to get a purchase order? Um, what, is, what is the process? And I remember when when going through these, these answers to these questions, there's multiple solutions to any one of these, um, one of these uh, questions. For example, if somebody has identified a problem that they do not like their neighbor, if you are selling walls, you're not the only solution that, that they have. They could also plant uh, a hedge or they could um, sell their house. So when you answer these questions, make sure you don't only answer it in the, in the context of your product. Uh, answer it in the context of the, of the challenge or uh, requirement that your persona has. Then once you know who your persona is and how to, uh, what their challenges are and what they're all about, you need to identify ways to identify this persona online. So this may be when they fill out a form, for example, and maybe you just need to ask what their job title is, and once you know what their job title is, you know what persona they are. Or maybe it's a multiple select um, uh, criteria, so they have to first tell you what country they're in, what best describes their requirements, and do they have children. And based on those three um, fields, you'll be able to place them into persona A, or persona B, or persona C. Um, the last option is, is their behavior. So you may identify uh, personas that visit a particular page on your website um, are persona A versus uh, personas that visit other pages or sections on your website are persona B. So how do you put this persona information together? Do you go and hold some workshops or do you go and do some primary research? So it really depends on your budget. So research can be really, really expensive and going to interview different customers and leads and so on, it could take very, very long. What we generally find is the collective intelligence of a sales and marketing team. So you try and aim for anything between three and eight people and you take them through a series of questions for each persona like the questions that we've just covered now um, and those people really do understand their customers that they deal with and so it is sufficient to use collective intelligence to build out these personas but then what is an important step is to then go and validate the, what you've come up with and go and check with one or two customers um, uh, in, your, in your base whether this information is correct. So then once you've got your persona document built out, the next stage is to start identifying campaigns or strategic interventions that you can put together um, for each of the elements that you have identified. So what I normally do is I open my persona document and I start 
read in from the top what I've written about the persona. I go through the personality section, the product section, the buying section, and as I read things, I start identifying key campaign ideas. So for example, in the what do you worry about section, um, I could say that this person worries about having a healthy family. That immediately gives me an idea for a top of funnel campaign around family meal planning. Otherwise, I could have a um, requirement, um, a product requirement where um, I want to block noisy neighbors. So that could give me a middle or funnel campaign idea where I could uh, create things around privacy in the home. Or I could, uh, in, the, in the buying stages where the person is actually shortlisting, they may be looking to uh, shortlist builders. Um, and I could do a very basic checklist type uh, document or a, a video, for example, on how to select the most appropriate builder. So making your campaigns come to life is all about taking these different strategic ideas, strategic campaign ideas that you have, and identifying assets um, such as ebooks and white papers, um, tools such as calculators, um, mini websites, different types of content, um, social media campaigns, all different types of things that you can make that campaign come to life. It's the area where you get to become creative. Um, What's the, the, the next step for you, though, is to watch our training on campaign strategy, which shows you how you take a campaign and then go out and develop the different stages of buying and different content that supports that. So to test what we have uh, told you today, go over to offers.empl.com forward slash academy dash personas, fill out the form, and we will send you a task to complete. Um, and you can also identify what video to watch next, which of, of course is the campaign strategy video. Thanks so much for attending the training today.